You're welcome back. We did say that we're going to be talking security and women's participation in the election or in politics. And we're being joined by Mr. Augustine Ega, a security expert. Welcome to the program, Augustine. Augustine, can you hear me? I can hear you. Good morning. Okay. Uh, good morning. Well, um, let us begin by assessing the level of preparedness of INEC as it regards uh, security. Yeah, I, th I think from what we can see in town now, uh, there have been a lot of redeployment of their officers. Yeah. I mean, the men of the police force, they are everywhere. And uh, also other law enforcement bodies and also the Nigerian army is also supporting uh, the Nigerian police because the Nigerian police are the primary people in charge of this election uh, supervision to maintain law and order. But other military uh, personnel have also joined, and other law enforcement bodies have also joined them. Around town, we can see that in very sensitive boots, some are there, some are of the intelligence unit. They are not wearing uniforms. They are all over the pulling units. You will not recognize them. Some are not on uniforms. They are gathering intelligence of every area. They are communicating which, uh, with themselves and ensuring that everything works according to plan. Ask you the, the second question. Um, uh, Mr. Bayo Loaki has been standing by very patiently. I haven't even introduced him today, but he's been there all this while. Bayo, I'm so glad to have you join us this morning. Good morning to you. Hello, Bayo. Yes, okay. I am good. Can okay. you hear me? Yes, I can hear you right now. Okay, um, Mr. Augustine Ega is uh, on now, and we're talking this security. And I know that you always have uh, good questions for Mr. Ega, but let me just ask him this before I hand him over to you. Uh, Mr. Ega, let me come back to you. Uh, what are the points, uh, I don't want to use flashpoints, that the security should be looking at, uh, at this election? Because tomorrow is just a matter of hours before the, the election proper begins. So where do you think concentration should be uh, and what do you think should be done by the security agencies? I think, I think there are two aspects of security we must look at. Um, on the physical side is just what I mentioned. We can see the law enforcement people uh, in some of the places where they have their men. There was this concern from the beginning uh, that how are they going to get their men to handle this election? There were fears that this election could be postponed. And I also mentioned earlier that there's always uh, a backup plan by the police to withdraw some of their men from sensitive beats in order to measure up with this election. And from the physical security, I think they are everywhere. Some are in uniform, some are in plain clothes. The DSS, they are all in, uh, in the intelligence unit, both the military and all the law enforcement. Some are not really putting on uniforms. And they are everywhere uh, trying to ensure that uh, things are working. Uh, based on also the normal uh, cash crunch that we can see in the society today in Nigeria, depleting us, it has also minimized the rate of movement. I mean, travels around town. Uh, we can see that the streets are a little bit quiet, just like what you say. People can drive freely. Uh, that shows that with this minimal movement on the streets, uh, it's also some form of security uh, for us to ensure that this uh, event or this, uh, uh, this exercise becomes a success. Now, on the logical security, which is cyber security, that is where I have major concern because everything has gone uh, uh, logical. When I mean logical, I mean cyber or digital. I don't know the preparation from INEC because if the election result will be uploaded instantly to the web, I think we need to have some very, very good cyber experts that will help us protect the integrity of this result so that they don't change the result online. And these are the things I, these are the side that I feel concerned. But on the physical side, I am very, very sure that the Nigerian police and the law enforcement and all the military parastatas, they are well on ground to ensure that they give their best. Okay, Bayo, he's, he's all yours now. I hand him over to you. Bayo, can you hear me? 
Okay, uh, Bio cannot hear me now, or if he can hear me, I cannot hear him now. So, uh, um, Mr. Egar, you're still yeah. with me. Um, we've had international observers come in. We've had external concerns, uh, countries from around the world expressing concern uh, over this election and talking about security, talking about the need for peaceful uh, elections and so many other things that the eyes of the world are on Nigeria right now. Do you think all these will help to bring calmness to this election? Yes, I'm sure it will bring calmness. Uh, you see, you said a child that is monitored will definitely want to do well. And I can see that the most tense election we ever had was the election uh, of Joe Goodluck Jonathan, former president Goodluck Jonathan, and the sitting president. That was the most tense election we've ever had and we'll ever have in Nigeria. Because during that period, I was also monitoring events from Ghana. The, the, the Marine Corps, the U.S. Marine Corps, they were all around in Ghana and uh, trying to see how they could do backup plans. In fact, even moving their men out of Nigeria or standing by for any emergencies that will happen. And it's a good thing for us because it's a form of uh, deterrent. Uh, if uh, the people in Nigeria want to compromise from any authority, they should know that Nigeria is not just standing alone. Nigeria is part of the international community. And so with them coming to uh, observe with us, it is a good thing uh, that it will help us to really do the right thing. A few days back, they had this peace accord. Of course, that started during Jonathan and the sitting president, uh, Buhari, where they had the peace accord signed. I think about uh, some few days back, a few hours back, the, the contestant, the presidential candidates, were also in Abuja uh, to sign the peace pact. And these are all measures to ensure that we have a peaceful election. Mm. Okay, Bio, we lost your audio at some point, so glad to have you back. He's all yours, please. Yes, um, thank you, Yangu. And uh, Mr. Egan, it's always a pleasure to, to have you on the program. Um, good morning. Good morning. Yes, I have been looking at the, um, you know, the entire setup and the preparations uh, and I have been particularly impressed by the fact that all the political parties campaigned across the country, maybe with the exception of Port Harcourt, if I'm right, when we had an explosion uh, before a particular rally in Port Harcourt. Um, but otherwise, everything has gone well. Now, there are those who suggest that this could underscore the claim of the military that they had actually neutralized the insurgency. Because we know that, for, for instance, 2013, 2014, uh, even most parts of the South had big issues with, uh, with uh, fears of Boko Haram. What's your, what's your response to that? You know, vis-a-vis -vis the conduct of the elections, the security around, the, sorry, the conduct of the campaigns the security around those campaigns and so on. What, what, what's your thought on that? I think, I think we have very enlightened electorates right now. We have people who are very enlightened. The, the political leaders are enlightened. They have come to realize that it's not a do or die. I mean, we can see some of these uh, leaders in those political parties that are contesting, actually having their own time and shaking hands and laughing. I think the society, I think the citizens of Nigeria have come to realize that it is a sport. To me, I see politics as a sport. And then they are realizing it because most of Nigerians are football fans. I think that is helping us to bring it into play in politics. That it is not something that everyone has to die for. And this has helped us uh, this far to see that the political parties and their leaders have conducted themselves very well. And ensuring that... Nigeria being in the, this state of violence for some time, they're really trying their best to ensure that they, they calm the whole situation. And I can also, uh, I'm also satisfied to say that the military, I think I read a comment yesterday, that the, 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 the Naira scarcity or the cash crunch that we have right now has helped them to mitigate the insurgency. And of course, we know that that is very true. Uh, because most of these things, uh, it, there are things that really need money to buy anything off. And some of these illegal buying is not something they do digital. It's something they do physical. 
And so by taking off this cash of the system, somehow has also helped to calm the security situation in Nigeria, even the campaigns. You can see that people are really out to just support. But those sharing, like we used to see, of course, even if they are sharing, it's not really there like before. And these are things that have also helped us at this moment that we're having, having a peaceful time to really talk. And I'm sure that we are going to have a very peaceful election. Okay. Now, um, we've always been concerned about the size of the police, you know. And uh, unfortunately, in my view, we do not seem to be doing anything about that. Uh, from the time of President Jonathan, even under President Buhari, they've done quite some things for the police, but the issue of the size of the police is still a big one. And you just alluded to the uh, hierarchy of our police withdrawing police officers from bits that are less sensitive. I look at the fact, if I'm correct, that we have um, 179,000 polling units. I'm just trying to make sure Sorry, 176,846 uh, yes. polling units for the presidential election. If we put one police officer, because there must be one police officer at least in each of the polling units, that right. would be 176,846 polling units. We cannot put the military in polling units because that's not allowed anywhere. Only the police can be in polling units. Do you think we are ready to have almost 177,000 police officers. We could be twice that if we keep two police officers, because police, you don't put one police officer anywhere. Many countries, there's always two police officers at once. That would be 176,846, 846 times two. Are we really up to that? <laughs> well, you see, when it comes to logistics, you know, uh, some of these uh, intelligence, there's a way, there's a handshaking. You know, we, if we depend on only just the police, they have law enforcement. You know, when it comes to this state, the civil defense, civil, as you can hear the word, the name civil, they are very involved, just like the police. Before they were not armed, now they are armed. And they also have DSS, which you will not know their number. How are you getting it, sir? So they mm -hmm. have DSS, they are very much involved in this, uh, this uh, uh, they are involved in the, pol the, the election process. But you will not really know them because they are plain clothes guys, they are secret service. And so they know how they strategize in their manpower. And they have been giving us results. And now that we have this kind of a logical approach to handling this election process, I think it's, even, it's something that is even, it will not, it's not even more demanding on having too much manpower because everything is going to be digital. And of course, they have DSS, they have the law enforcement, some are on the, back, on the background without clothes. They're just to check, to check my certain violence. But I'm sure that, from the strategy that they have, I'm sure they are prepared. If they are not prepared, definitely they will inform the presidency that they are not prepared. But if it's a go for us, I'm sure the security situation is, is solid for us to go. Okay. Um, okay, so um, it's, it's good to hear that. Sorry, I'm good. <laughs> you, you can go ahead. I was going to do a follow-up, but which would be like a wrap-up. Okay, okay. yeah. The, but at this point, is it's just 12 hours to that that D-Day. So I'm just asking what security measures can be deployed by the citizens themselves in order to stay safe, yet still protect their votes. Right. Right now, the citizens, are, first of all, they must know where they are going to vote. Because you see some certain confusion that I've had in the past. You see somebody will go through two polling units or three polling units until they get frustrated at the end, they won't vote. I think this is the best hour to find out where you're supposed to vote, where your polling unit is, your polling station, where you need to vote. This is the hour to find out, not tomorrow morning. And before they leave, there are so many emergency numbers we have for the media, including the television media and the radio. They all have their lines that we can call. They have the Nigerian military have also produced, they also provided us with the emergency numbers. We also have the Nigerian police and all law enforcement. They have the emergency numbers everywhere. So before anyone leaves his house, I believe we should have all of these numbers working. The media, the law enforcement, the military should have all these numbers. So that if you see anything, you say something by calling either the law enforcement or military or the media to help you uh, take shots and then uh, ensure that you send some evidence to the media to back up whatever point you're making. 
And when they go to the polling units, it's advisable they them be aware that the campaign is over. There's nothing like I stand for this party or not. At this moment, you need to keep quiet so that you don't raise some sort of violence at the polling units, at polling stations. So you just go there and ensure that you keep to yourself who you're voting for, because those are uh, areas that will also bring some kind of violence against some citizens who are not aware of it, that you need to keep quiet. This is a moment of silence from now till you cast your vote. There should be no talk about politics or political party anymore. Uh, I think this, this is what I see. And when they go, uh, they should be adherent to the instruction that will be given. They will definitely meet the, elect, the, the INEC officials. They will meet certain law enforcement people trying to conduct them on the crowd. Just obey the crowd. Obey the people organizing the crowd. So that if there is conduct, there is obedience, there is uh, uh, some sort of uh, compliance to the rules and regulation in the particular polling unit. I'm so order will follow suit. But if there's this confusion, we're going to have confusion at the polling unit. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Augustin Ega, for uh, coming on the program and giving us security tips. Uh, it's good that you are very confident that tomorrow will be a very, very peaceful election. And God willing, we really are going to have that. So we are hoping that you are going to vote as well tomorrow, right? <laughs> I'm very prepared. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Very prepared to vote. <laughs> oh, well, vote well, stay safe. Thank you for coming on the program today. Thank you. Welcome. Okay. It's a pleasure. Okay, it's always a pleasure talking with Mr. Augustin, a guy, security expert of international repute, and he's telling us that tomorrow is going to be very peaceful, and we all are hoping for that. And we're going to take a short break right now. When we return, we'll be talking about women's participation in uh, election or in politics generally, and we'll be joined by our guests. In the meantime, just stay with us. <laughs>